And level of dark, like, you know, like reading a book about Dom or like watching like a documentary on Netflix, people are so drawn to that. It's like when people talk about heavy music, you know, from the hardcore scene, it was like, I know they thought about Slipknot, but no one said it. Yeah. It's like- Until well, now, right? Until now. Whenever I need music gear, I always go to Sweetwater.com. If it's mics, headphones, or studio and recording gear, Sweetwater has you covered. Next time you need any music gear, support the podcast by using the link in the description and comment section below. And we are also brought to you by Blunts and Caffeine. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Which one uh, should, we, should we choose here? Um, you like the crooked one, huh? <laughs> the, the one, yeah, th this one looks like the most solid this one yeah yeah my uh via youtube thank you i learned how to roll joints oh nice you rolled a, a cone too that's a little bit tougher my mine are very coney like, yeah like those like those are the ones that i personally enjoy doing i feel like they burn better too do they yeah it's like more even i'm definitely not uh what's that word kind of sore kind of sore. yeah <laughs> I, I i just i, I just do things Mar marijuana connoisseur that's yeah. always funny yeah <laughs> That's working. All right. So, cheers. cheers. So, Zach, you almost died for the podcast. I just want to say publicly that I appreciate that. Hey, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes to get it done, right? Oh, my goodness. So, you flew in today from Aftershock. How was that festival? Man, honestly, I had a great time. It was, uh, it's cool. I, I love Aftershock because it, uh, it's like the closest thing I think that Americans get to like that real European uh, music festival experience, you know, like not just that it's like multiple days, yeah. but the lineups are just so cool and like diverse. Yeah. You know, like you see Slipknot and Evanescence on the same day. That's so sick. And Rob Zombie. You know what I mean? Like that is fucking sick, huh? Yeah. I, I feel like there's very few festivals, you know, at least in the US. I know Europe has so many like really sick festivals. But in the U.S., you don't really see, like, that caliber of lineup too often, you know? No. Who do you think was, like, uh, what? what's the right word? Not softest, but more chill artist band there. <laughs> like, most mellow? Yeah. I guess there's, there was, like, different kinds of melodic. Um, Young Youngblood is pretty melodic because he's, you know, he's more so, like, an alt-pop artist. Okay. Like he has high energy, but he, you know, he yeah. he has a lot of like really like kind of pretty sounding melodies and stuff in his vocals. Nice. And then probably, I mean, Evanescence, like Amy Lee's vocals are just like, you you don't need. I mean, they, they have heavy riffs, heavy songs, but yeah. honestly, I I was cool just you know hearing her melodies. They're so amazing. You forget how of an amazing singer she is. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm, I'm just hearing clips because they're on tour of Corn. Oh yeah, I'm seeing clips and hearing, I'm like, damn, I, f oh, she, beautiful voice, and you, you forget about about those hits, yeah, oh, those songs, god damn. No, I know. It, seeing it, I mean, I kept saying that throughout the whole weekend, but seeing them, especially in person, I think it hit different for me. Part sound incredible. Yeah, they're so tight, you know, and the songs still hold up. Yeah, and shout out to their drummer Will Will Hunt. He's a fucking phenomenal. Oh, dude, he was killing it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just loving life. Yeah, no, that's and that's the best thing too is when you can tell the bands are really enjoying themselves on stage. Yeah, I think it, like the fans notice it for sure. Totally. Who was your favorite band? <sighs> like as far as performance, like who? Yeah, I mean, what stuck with you? What was like? Oh, that was like the band. What was like? Your um, favorite? if I had to pick a top three. I would say, well, last night, uh, Papa Roach uh, played right before My Chemical Romance. Oh, wow, that's fucking sick. And, man, they're so good live. They are. Jacoby is such an incredible performer. Like, my mind was blown. Really? Yeah, just, like, lately, I've been really paying attention when I see live bands, how well the front man captures the audience. And I feel like Jacoby probably did the best job out of, like, the whole, like, the whole festival, to be honest. That's fucking rad. I'm not surprised. I've seen him like fucking, well, now, like 
fuck, 13 years ago. They're yeah. just like that. Normally, it talked about how sick they were live. Yeah. I was watching them like, oh my God, you're like killing it. This yeah, and they're so tight. Tight life. They have, but um, but they also have like that raw energy, you know, uh, that really like sticks with you, like you were saying. So I, I love them. Um, Mashuga, that's just like a personal favorite of mine. So I'm always gonna, you know, be stoked on them. And uh, who I mean, probably Evanescence would be my third. Nice. I was surprised. Like I I do love their music, but I wasn't expecting to love their live performance as much as I did. Like, yeah, I was really blown away. That's sick. Mm -hmm. Was there like a like a particular band or artist or reason why you went you went out there? Um. Well, uh, my roommate Morgoth Beats. Shout out Michael. Um, his parents live up there, and oh, yeah, uh, yeah. so we kind of just like planned to like head out there together, and then Good uh, timing. yeah, and then uh, a couple of our our friends were going up there at the same time too. So uh, I was like, man, might as well just like make a fun trip out of it, you know? Yeah, it's fucking badass. Yeah, fucking awesome festival, man. It's sick. Yeah. So it's funny. I think Meshuggah went from up there to down here because they were in Riverside last night. Oh, that's right. Yeah, home yeah. hometown. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, fucking right there. Did you go to that show? Oh yeah, I went. I went. I kind of popped in and out. Okay. Yeah, at the uh, Riverside. I can't see. It. I actually wrote it down because I, I have such a hard time saying it. Riverside Municipal Auditorium. Yeah, that one always had like a weird. I was like, can you just fucking <laughs> name it like fucking Riverside Theater? I don't yeah. fucking know. Come on, man. Yeah, I know. People in your town have a fucking speech impediment. <laughs> don't don't you know that? <laughs> Your boy has a fucking speech impediment. Oh he, my he, God. he can't fucking say that word. Yeah, I think everyone abbreviates the venue when they talk about it. Because mm -hmm. people usually just refer to it uh, as the initials. But um, yeah, what, what a fuck. That's a really cool venue. I was looking up the uh, capacity of that place. It says fourteen hundred, but I don't know. That's that's mm -hmm. a. It was a big. I think it's bigger than fourteen. I was like, dude, you you been there? Mm-hmm. That's a, it's yeah, like the floor is massive, the stage is massive. They have, they have a, a balcony, and it's yeah. packed as fuck. It's at least as big as the House of Blues Anaheim, right? Yeah, and House of Blues as that spot is nineteen hundred capacity. Yeah. I was like, there's no way uh, that, that that place was fourteen hundred cap. It looks so. I mean, it was fucking packed. Maybe um, you know, different counties have different like law, like zoning laws for the venues, so maybe they're just not allowed to hold as many people. I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm, that's just a guess. Yeah, maybe it's like, let's put this on the website. We're really going to fucking squeeze in right. 2,500. You yeah. know? It Cause, looked like a 2,500. Cause yeah, because you know how fire marshals can get. Like, if there's too many people per square inch, they, they'll, like, shut the show down. Interesting. You know, a packed show. Like, do bands like that. Mashuka did it. Like, there's just a line at the merch table all fucking day. Oh, I bet. Dude, I'm leaving, and there's... They're fucking playing, and there's people in, yeah. still in fucking line, dude. They're definitely like, I, I feel like merch in general is more popular than it's ever been, but Mashuga is definitely like a merch heavy band. Yeah, you got to get that fucking shook shit, dude. Yeah, because uh, don't you feel like their music, like their visuals, are just as important as like their actual music? Yes. You know, like their artwork? Yes. You know, totally. kind of similar to like maybe Tool, like a band like that. Yeah, everything needs to like coincide. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, their live show. Yeah, that, I mean, whoever I forget who, I think it's someone that's related to them does does their lights. So that's why it's all like on cue. Oh yeah, and I'm pretty. He's probably like a drummer too. I'm guessing, right? Probably yeah. Something like you know Thomas Hake's cousin or something. Oh, that's awesome. Something like that. That's why why their light show is always so. It's like precise and like. Yeah. Can you can you imagine? Having to control the lighting to like Thomas Hawk's kicks. Oh my goodness! Dude. <laughs> you have to know every song basically. You pretty much do. Yeah, insane. You played uh, "Rational Gaze." <laughs> oh that my was, god, that, that was your third song, and people like. It's funny, like when a certain song plays, there's like a shift in the crowd. Yeah, and the floor is so big that mm -hmm. there's two pits. Yeah, there's like one on my side, and the other one. Like, damn, <laughs> people just start freaking out. I'm like, this is sick. That band gets people in a trance. Oh yeah, yeah. I think the song that did that uh, when they played it after Shock was uh, "New Millennium Sinai Christ." Yeah, when they played that, it was all, like whole crowd opened up. It was sick. God, it's so fucking good, man. Saw so I went there to hang out with some very old friends. Went to the. It sucks because that venue is right by like the Mission Inn, which is like a mm -hmm. kind of prestigious hotel, right. and they wouldn't allow anyone from the show 
uh, in those in, inside those bars. Oh wow! It's like I was why I just pay fifteen dollars parking. It's like a walk over here to this nice bar and and pretend I'm bougie. They're like no metal dudes allowed. They probably see like oh no <laughs> way, dude. You guys all get the fuck out of here. <laughs> man, dude, that's funny. I mean, fucking sick show. Uh, in flames also played pretty sick. Oh, I saw them too. Yeah, they were sick. And they're badass. I wonder, people kept asking me, too, like, have you guys played here? I'm like, no. I wonder, we we should probably do a show there. I mean, you guys might as well. You're basically like a hometown band, you know, to Riverside, so. Riverside, yeah. That's why I looked at the cap. I'm like, you know, what what is this capacity? I wonder, because, like, it's it's a big opinion. I don't know if we could do this. Oh, you guys totally could. You know, I'm a, my my brain just goes, you (laughs) you suck. You draw two people, you (laughs) fuck. But, yeah, I mean. The way it's like laid out, I was like, dude, this will be like, I, I, I could see it as that show here. Yeah. And I mean, I think a lot of kids that live in the IE would probably be stoked, you know, mm-hmm. that maybe haven't had the chance to see you before. Yeah. I noticed like people I saw, they like old friends, like, oh, shit, it's Riverside. So you, know, you come out to the Riverside show and yeah. Sugar is that kind of band where like everyone's going to go. No, for sure. Yeah. The very like laid back vibe. It's fucking cool, man. This we're fucking killing that. I know it's almost done. Oh my goodness, dude! <laughs> so we uh, started Cobra Kai on Netflix. Oh, nice season five. It's fucking sick, dude. Dude, I love that show. I need I need some shirts. Oh yeah, I need some fucking with a, with shirts. The, the Cobra on it, dude. So good. Yeah, it's a sick logo. What a hard line to hit. Like it needs to be like serious because obviously it's from Karate Kid, but also like. There is parts that are cheesy, but it works. And for some reason, you like like you like it. Yeah, well, because there was a cheesiness to uh, Karate Kid, right? A little uh, bit. I think so. Like not. It wasn't very obvious, but there's definitely like funny moments. You like the wax on, wax off thing. It was always like kind of been yeah. a meme. I feel like. Yeah, it's like a cheesiness. There's also like some beautiful wisdom in there. Yeah, it's such a cool show to watch. You know? No, totally. You got to do like a, a few of them. Because we first started at Dahmer, because oh. everyone's talking about that. Everyone watched it at the same time. I know, which I wanted to join everybody so we could talk about it. But <laughs> I got past the first episode where like he was talking to um, a certain person and brings him back to the, his room. Like it was like, oh, this is fucking. Yeah, it started on such dark. a dark note. I know. And one thing is, we all want to do it, but. You can't watch something dark with someone that you're talking to, like uh, like like your boyfriend yeah. or girlfriend. Yeah, that's not a good move. It's uh, it kills the mood every time. Yeah, like if it here, I think the thing is, since it's real, like it really happened. Yeah, it's just a bummer. You know what I mean? Like if it yeah. if it were, you know, a fictional story, I think you can get away with it. Totally. You know what I mean? Like you could show a girl uh, on a date, like a horror movie, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, there is something about it being real. That to me would probably it would probably put off a girl if you're like on a date with her. Yeah, it's funny. Like even when I put it on, I knew I'm like, oh, this is gonna be like, there's no vibe here. We're just gonna watch, <laughs> like committing to watching like the first episode. You guys are just both disturbed. Oh my goodness, yeah. It's just when you're trying to get a vibe or like, this it just kills the mood. Yeah, it just kills it. I'm like even even when I'm feeling like, oh my god, then yeah. We, and nothing can really save you from that. We watched. Uh, then we went on to Joy Corey's new special. Uh, oh, that's funny. He had a special from the mm-hmm. live, left the forum. Phenomenal. He's fucking funny as hell. And then went to Corbett Kai. It's still, not, nothing can save you from, from fucking Dahmer, dude. I mean, that, the, that the, first The one. lingering, like, feeling of dread was still there. I know, God. There's, no. there's a place in Wisconsin called The Rave. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. been there. You've been there? Yeah. Oh, sick. You remember there's a, a really creepy hotel, like, across the street? Yep, and like they, they they say, well, that's like there's a room up there that supposedly Dahmer took um, one of his victims. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, every time I, I'm on that spot, I look across the street, you see it's like this big, <clears throat> tall, like classic, creepy looking fucking hotel. Dude, I, yeah, I, there's something fascinating about those like old, creepy buildings. You know what I mean? Like Dude, anything, you're just drawn to them. It's so weird because you it's you weird. can feel the history in there. You know? Yeah. So fucking like damn. But I mean, we're, we're just fascinated by, like, that kind of architecture as well. Right, yeah, you know, all we're the, just like, like, curved, like, pillars and stuff. It's like, we're just so drawn to it. It's fucking weird. Yeah. You know? You just know that some stuff went down there, man. Why Why are people 
drawn to those kind of like documentaries and buildings? I think because <clears throat> it probably makes us feel more human. Think so? Yeah, like there's something about that that kind of, uh, you know, it, it just reminds you like, hey, we're alive. <laughs> the, the, like the fact that this kind of crazy stuff can happen, I think it does kind of, rem well, it reminds you you're alive and it also reminds you to like appreciate what you have probably. Yeah, I mean, there has to be something to that. I mean, like everyone's drawn to it. Yeah. You know, no, it's, definitely. And, and it's like a certain like darkness people want to know about, but not too dark. Yeah. You know, it has to be, there's like a certain level of dark, like, you know, like reading a book about Dahmer or like watching like a documentary on Netflix. People are so drawn to that. Yeah. But we can't never fathom how evil that shit is and dark. And then when you get into, I was, oddly enough, I want to talk about this last week and there's like a dark subject I want to talk about, but I was going, oh, I'll do it later. So we yeah. go dark and then go light. And then, but this is the flow of the, of the, of the conversation. Um, they were just so fucking, like, drawn to that shit. You know, I mean, like, uh, I've been waiting to talk about this shit for a long time on the podcast, but I want to get, like, I mean, people don't want to listen first because I, I just want to go dark sometimes. Yeah, you got uh, Out of, uh, just out of <clears throat> curiosity, I'm not, like, drawn, I'm, I'm like, what, what's the word? I'm not, like, a weirdo weirdo, but I like to be <laughs> aware of, like, what's around. You yeah. Know, where, I mean, I, I'm just really curious about humans and that side of them. So purposely, just to remind myself, I'll, I'll like go on like these websites. Right. And like, it's the ones where like, you know, real death videos and like, for me, it's like, I don't click the video, but it's the headline. And I'll, sometimes I'll read like the description and a thumbnail is enough for me. And I get fucking freaked out because it's real. Yeah. And uh, it's okay. Then like, it's so weird how that stays with you. Like, that whole day you get kind of like creeped out or like you wake up like, oh, 100%. shit. Oh, fuck. But for this, so it kind of makes you like a subconscious weirdo, but there is a healthy thing to that. Well, it, it's, I don't think it's a bad thing to like know, like, hey, there's bad things can happen to you. Because, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's smart to be aware of those things because you don't, I mean, you know, hopefully that kind of stuff never happens, but you never want to be in a situation where you could have prevented it from happening. Totally. If you saw the signs of like, hey, this is kind of how this usually goes down. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, you don't want to be completely oblivious to like the planet that we live on. You just don't want to yeah. do that. There is like, it does kind of make you like a, a weirdo <laughs> for me. Like, you get, like, it makes you shaky and shit. You, you just like, you're mm -hmm. being humans a hard thing to, to, to be. Yeah. But uh, there is something worse than that. And that's being like oblivious, you know? Yeah. There's like a, there's kind of like a healthy balance, right? Totally. Because you don't want to be, like, totally negative and think that, like, the world's all bad, right? Yeah, you don't. Um, but you also don't, like you said, you don't want to be totally, like, ignorant about things. You have to know what's going on. Yeah, you have to know, like, the darkest things. You, you know, we have no idea. We have no fucking idea, man. There's some freaky shit out there. Dark, I, the, whatever thing you think you come up with your head, someone has done that to you, another, like, another human. The worst thing possible. Ten times worse, yeah. Worst thing possible in the worst way. Yeah. And, uh... So yeah, I just it's, it's, it's a weird like context context thing. I I uh, I I, had to, I want to be aware of it, you know. And then it was actually exactly last uh, last week from now. Uh, we were driving home here. Yeah. And uh, we got to uh, we're almost at at the gas station. I was going through one of my moments. Okay, let me just look up some videos right. <laughs> and get <laughs> and get fucking freaked out. Yeah. Um. Every once in a while, I will watch the video because it's not too. This totally gruesome. Yeah. But uh, this was recent. This was, I think, exactly like a week ago. It was like happening in real time. So around uh, Astoria slash Queens, New York, mm -hmm. uh, an EMS lieutenant crossed the street, and uh, she was 61. Uh, Allison Ruscio, I mean, total legend, 61-year-old woman. Right. Crossed the street. Either The story is she either went to got get lunch or do you like a small problem that uh that she had, she had to handle mm -hmm. and this 34 our age like imagine do our wow. age yeah um broad daylight in the corner dude push her down takes out a fat knife or stabbing her stabbing and like uh the count is like 19 20 times 
Oh my so God. like it's like a very short video, but like you're just watching them like. But it's what? gruesome because it how fast happens. It's like what the. F- that dude is stabbing that chick to death. And like all like the movements, it's just like, it freaks you out. It's like, oh my God. And, and I was like, oh my God. And then I, all right, but then we arrive at a gas station. Yeah. In middle of nowhere in Arizona. We're at, we're at like this, you know, pilot truck stop. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm looking at these hot dogs. I mean, which shitty hot dog am I going to get today? You know, like I'm hungry. Right. And I'm not sure what, what they're called. Like, like like a touristy group, like you know, like a class of like people on a big bus and they all go out and like oh, like a tour, yeah, something like a tour guide uh, or something, tour guide kind of thing. Yeah, right? there's yeah. probably fifteen, maybe twenty, like older women. I'm talking like eighty five up. They're, right, they're all wearing like a, like a red shirt and one older gentleman. And I was like, I was almost just. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, curious. I'm, well, what do they do? It's yeah. still looking at these shitty hot dogs. And they broke out into song. Whoa. It was like right next to like a Cinnabon, like a Christmas carol type style. Ooh, the world's a beautiful place. Like the, the lyrics they were saying, like, it was like, but like imagine. A, like, like a choir. Yes, very, very, very choiry. Wow, that's cool. And <clears throat> you know when it happens, like your body just fuels up is full of joy yeah. like pure whatever that feeling is love joy nothing but positivity like like wholesome energy very wholesome like yeah i was like you know just i'm at this fucking shitty gas station trying not to cry right like, there was just like such pure energy like you're talking these older women that lived their a whole lives right had kids and kids kids and just yeah. have real life experiences and they were just are singing in this choir way and no one no one want. No one told him to stop. So it was just kind of like you don't. He didn't want to look either. Yeah. But it's just enjoying such purity, pure good, wholesome energy. Just like, damn, this is wow. Yeah. And then it's kind of seeing someone from like your favorite band. I got nervous. Right. Like I want. I want to be like, wow, that was. Thank you for that. That was so beautiful. Thank yeah. you. And like I, I didn't. I didn't say anything. And then then he left. And I was like, that is literally life. Definitely. Like, like just like you're aware of this, the darkest of the dark. It's like this is real shit, and then have that feeling and seeing good people right after you look something. Cr- yeah, look it looks like crazy. That like, fucking opposite moods and things yeah. happen in such a short period of time. The polarity of yeah, the, I was yeah. like, damn, that is like there's such a beauty to that. It's like, man, it, that's that's life. Yeah, I was just, I was probably saying the same thing. That's like life in a nutshell, right? Yeah. There's positive energy and there's negative energy, and then we exist somewhere like in the middle of it. Yeah, you know, it's so nuts. Oh, you might hear a favorite song of yours. This brings out the something in you. Yeah, it's like man, that was like that just left it like an impression on me. It's See like that, holy shit. That's almost like magical for that to happen. Yeah, you know, in that timing. It was so yeah, it's such like an opposite yeah emotion. It was like damn this. It's like, you don't. Know, you don't know what you need sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's like, I was, I, I didn't even know I needed that. <laughs> Shit. Dude, it's like, <clears throat> I don't know, it's cool when those kind of moments happen. Because sometimes yeah. they could happen when you're having like a bad day or something or you're not feeling that good. Yeah, it's so good. And then you just get reminded where it's like, man, it's really not that bad. Like, there's cool stuff going on in the world. You just have to focus more on the positive side, I think. Totally. You do, focusing on the positive is definitely a real, you have to, like actually do it. Yeah. It's funny. I was just doing that like right, right before you got here. I was standing outside. I just had some headphones on. Not even listening to any music. Just li- this. I want to kind of because we because this spot is like is by like the airport. So we have literally airplanes will f- literally fly really close to to our building. Right. And right next to us is like the fucking a busy fucking freeway. Like yeah. the, like that like space between our building and that fucking freeway is like it's loud. But I was like, there's something that your mind can do. And uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely smoking weed. <laughs> this is, I, oh my goodness! This is okay, so I, I apologize. If I'm, I'm ranting, but uh, <laughs> you know how there's like the power lines, like right, right, right next to the freeway. Mm-hmm. You saw all, you saw all these birds chilling on on, on the power lines. And there's something about birds that are very calming and peaceful, and like just grounds your body into mm. into your feet and to what you're saying. You feel very grounded. You feel good. Very, very present. Yeah. And um. 
And every, every so often they will fly off the, uh, like, like the power lines. And then, you know, birds fly, they're like crazy, but they're all, but they're all together. Right. They're all like, man, man how do you? It's like controlled chaos. It's, it's controlled chaos. Yeah. It's like, man, this is like, um, it's a very calming thing. I was just watching my dad, that's fucking nuts. It's felt very like, yeah, the, again, there's just some, something about birds. And then they go back to the power lines and like being really present, I like separated my mind, like cut it in half or like where you could kind of focus on, you really choosing where you focus. Either I could focus on this fucking crazy noise right now that the freeway is right, damn they're connected to the damn fucking power line, but right. how uh, you could, you're able to focus on what you want to focus on. You could like kind of zone in on something. Yeah. Yeah. So like there's like this, like finding common, like the chaos. You, know, right. you have like this chaotic saying about airplanes right here and like fucking freeway right here on, when mm -hmm. we're in fucking California, dude. So it's loud as fuck. Yeah. And like you could choose what you focus on. I was just focusing on his birds to calm down before we, we, we started talking. Like, man, there was, it was so calming. Like you, it's just like having like when you do it right sometimes, you know, I'm not, I, don't, I don't get it right every time. But yeah, just be able to be present and focus on something and just like it's ultra calm. Yeah, is it, isn't that the uh, kind of, I guess, the philosophy of how Buddhism works is to, mm -hmm. like, kind of uh, be able to simplify your thoughts and try to focus just on one thought at a time? Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure I've, I've spoken to a monk once, and I think they described it in that way, where it was like, it's all about, it's basically like anti-anxiety. It's about not overthinking things and just being able to isolate your thoughts into, like, one specific thing. That's it's a very real thing, yeah, and definitely put it in into practice. Peace and chaos that's life, yeah, you know, that's it's man, really that, cool how that works, too. Yeah, and it's something we all have access to. I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure you go outside, you, mm -hmm. you will see some birds, right? You don't need like a special ability, it's just, yeah, it's just like, oh, shit, it's fucking free. I, I went outside and was just looked up and like just watching birds, and I don't even know how much time passed, yeah, it's just like here's just, just, just looking, vibing. <laughs> You know, it's like, yeah. shit, like you could, this is free. Anyone can do that. And mm -hmm. then boom, nerves are down. You're more present in the moment. You, you feel your steps when you're walking on, on the concrete up, up, up the stairs. I'm like, damn, this yeah. is, man, what, what magic we have access to just for fucking free. It's like free therapy, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. birds are interesting too. Like I feel like it's calming to even watch them fly because it, yeah. it's like a weightless kind of look. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think... We associate weightlessness to like being calm, right? Like not feeling mm. weight on you. It's like that's a good one. Yeah, I, like if you could uh, if you could describe like a good dream when you feel like warm and like you know cozy. Yeah, it's like a weightless feeling. You know, that's true, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ross Robinson gave me some advice. Uh, there's weight of the mind, right? Yeah, I was like. You know, he always he has stuff like that. He says you're just like whoa, and it's he fucking, has those one liners. Yeah, it just, just fucking changes your life. <laughs> you know, like weigh the mind. Yeah, I mean, that, what's in your mind could weigh you the fuck down, man. Totally. Yeah, it's it's incredible how uh, our brains can either make us feel really good or really bad, and you feel it physically. Yes. You know? Yeah, that's so fucking nuts, man. And you're you you brought up dreams. Um, Last night I had a dream that uh, Carlo, Carlo Santana was on the podcast. That's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> I had a fucking dream about that. Dude, that's sick. It was like, is this going to be reality? I hope so. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big Carlo Santana fan. That Dude, would be talk awesome. talk about the sickest of the sickest. I mean, he has the riffs. He fucking damn, they made the riffs. Holy shit, dude, Carlo Santana. Yeah. I mean, Carlo Santana, I think, really, on a mainstream scale, made guitar music cool. In the way that it is now, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like, uh, and when I say that, I mean like, where it doesn't have to be specifically a rock music. It's just like cool guitar riffs thrown into any genre. Mm -hmm. He kind of, I think he did that before anyone else. Yeah, I mean, obviously we all we all know Black Magic Woman, and uh, I forgot what number of record it was. It was a lot, like thir his thirteenth record or some. He did a uh, yeah. su Supernatural. Like mm -hmm. late 90s or 2000s, that shit blew up. That's probably my favorite album. What an incredible record. And, and what yeah. an idea to be, and to be so innovative later on in your career. 
Right. That was, that's what's cool about Santana, too, is I feel like he experimented more and more as he got older. That's insane. And he still does today. You know? Yeah. And then to evolve that way and to actually have su- to get success from that, that's a, that's a next level guitar player, man. Yeah, Holy I mean, shit. yeah, he'll he'll literally hop on, you know, like a like a pop track or a rap track and just totally like transform it into like it's it's his own signature sound still. Dude, Santana, shout out! Yeah, shout out Santana. Holy, I mean, maybe that's a premonition, man. I would oh. shit my pants again. <laughs> yeah, I would. I might have to. Uh, I might fanboy. I'm not gonna lie, dude. Carlos Santana chorus. <laughs> I might have to fanboy a little bit on that one. And actually, like the beginning of that dream was Joe Rogan was first doing it, but he was fu- fucking it up. So then I, so then I came in. <laughs> <laughs> we we kicked out Jamie and Joe. <laughs> oh my god! So obviously that party dream is not gonna happen. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like oh my goodness, dude. It would be a funny skit though. Yeah, like if Joe was down to like act that out, dude. So good. That would actually be like you just walk into the podcast in the middle and you just like kick him out. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> the fucking goat. I mean, shit, Santana's in Vegas. I wonder if he lives there. Um, you know what? I'm not sure, but I I could see him living in Vegas. Yeah, he always plays the House of Blues. Yeah. He he has like a residency there, right? Yeah. So good. I saw it once. Oh, he probably does live in Vegas then. Did he ever does he do like those casino shows too? Hmm? Did he ever do that? You know, like some artists have a residency at like casinos and stuff like that. Did he? I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm trying to think. But anyways, he's he's definitely one of those artists that could just like he's so good that they'll just hire him to play like once a week. You know, you you can never get it never gets old to see him play guitar. That's what I'm saying. I would never get tired of that. Yeah, like the fucking last time I saw him was I was to I'll be I'll admit it I was drunk. <laughs> I mean, and then yeah. I mean you know yeah, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I mean I'm high right now. Uh, <laughs> and we we walked in. And he starts playing Evil Ways, and like, you know, like to get goosebumps when you're drunk is really hard. It takes a lot, right? Because you're more kind of loose. Yeah, you're all loose. Your you're like, I don't give a fuck about anything right now. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I'm in Vegas, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching Carlos Santana right now. Yeah. And then, oh, just hearing him play, like, damn. Yeah, just fucking get goosebumps. And it stays. Yeah. It's like, oh, fuck. He just that's has, sick, he has like a feel, you know? Like some mm-hmm. artists just have, it's like a thing you can't explain, right? Yeah, you can't. And thinking about feel and music, you really can't. Like, you kind of know when whoever's playing has that feel, or or, yeah. or is feeling it. You know? Yeah, for sure. It's like, I mean, yeah, those, those riffs, you just feel them. You know, where you know, some consciously like uh, suicide silence definitely took like stuff like that from Carlos Santana that done it years before us. You know, he put just fucking feel it. You kind of know when someone's playing from like their soul. Yeah, you know, just like this. There's that thing you can't put your finger on. Well, that's you know? that's definitely the thing that I think people like about you guys the most is like the raw energy and like authenticity, where it's like, um, it's like similar to like a horror movie having like violence in it for a reason, right? Yeah. Versus like, not just kind of throwing it in there for the sake of either being heavy or being totally. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like you guys always did it with intention. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I always say that we play what feels heavy, not what sounds heavy. Mm. That's always so weird to me because you could, you could actually to your ear, it sounds better, and it sounds heavier to your ears. Yeah, but for some reason, when we do it, we just always, well, that feels better. And then once yeah. then years pass, there's like this thing to it. So when you play something that feels heavy, it comes off as heavy. It's so yeah. It's, it's a weird thing. I don't, I don't even really know what I'm, tr- I'm trying to, trying to say. Just, because it's, there's it's like hard, it's hard to explain it. Well, yeah, because there's like you know there's a difference between like adding an extra string and tuning down even lower mm-hmm. than like your last record. Yeah, and like it just having it's the way you got like the attack of your guys's music. I think. Yeah, it's like the velocity. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think that's what it is more so than like, oh, this is double drop C. You know, it, it has yeah. nothing to do with that. It's just like, it's the raw energy. That again, it's it's that thing you can't explain. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's that's definitely the goal. You know, 
give give that raw energy is chill it's like just be you you know yeah and, and you uh, guys are your, being yourselves yeah way. oh yeah totally it's us yeah you know? i feel weird seeing this shit but uh this kind of this only this crossed my mind literally like a few days ago i was in my on my morning walk yeah and uh i was like who's been playing deathcore longer than me <laughs> i don't know it's very few i don't know Consistently? Oh, consistently? I mean, there's Still, not many. I was, who, who's done it? Like, lo- like lo- longer than 20 years. I think, technically, the first deathcore band is the Red Chord, right? Okay. Because they're like, what, like 97 or something? They, they're like super old. Yeah. So I think they might be the first. Yeah. Technically. But they they didn't even really have, like, you know, the deathcore sound that, like, people know today. It was, like, yeah. a, their version. Hmm. There's a couple guys. I mean... Very few, like uh, like Ion Dissonance, Despised Icon, were yeah. pretty early too. But like, but consistently touring, still putting our records, still no, no exactly. I mean, I, I'm saying it's just to uh, just to add to the story, but I don't feel this way. I mean, but you know, we put we have numbers. These big, we're on the charts. Like, who's like been doing it for so long? That see, that is a combination that you won't find. Yeah, been, yeah, doing it for so long and staying that consistent. Like that, that see that is, puts you guys in a different category for sure. Twenty years. So who's no one? <laughs> I'm, Honestly, I'm, no one. Because uh, I asked myself the question because I want to know. I'm like, man, who who have I jammed in a while? Am I am I forgetting something? Somebody like yeah. I was, like, trying to think like like who? I was like, oh shit, is it me? <laughs> it's you guys. I mean, there's I a know. reason why when people think of deathcore, you guys are literally always the first band that pops in people's heads. It's weird. It is a fucking weird thing. 20 years, man. It's fucking weird. And, in you know, and not to mention that it wasn't, that, you know, it wasn't a popular genre when you guys started, too. So. All people fucking hated it. I remember that because. Oh, um, oh, my God. You know, because I grew up liking both metal and hardcore. Yeah. And I remember that weird feud where, like, hardcore kids didn't like metalheads and metalheads didn't like hardcore kids, you know? Oh, yeah, dude. It was definitely a fucking, like, divide. Totally. Yeah, and then I saw it slowly, that gap started closing, and people just started kind of maturing and accepting that, like, hey, there's different ways to make this sound. Totally. It's, no no, no way is bad, it's just a different approach to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's so funny how things change. Now, fucking, it's cool. Dude, I, I love the fact, I, I like positivity, man. I like, yeah. he- like, I like that the scene is healthier now, and people get along, and it's... You know, I mean, it it only benefits everyone that's a part of it, you know? Yeah. People are more open-minded, and now Deathcore bands come out as fucking as accepted. I'm like, damn, that's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. How far how far things have come. And the, the reason why I said that, because, you know, I'm not an idiot. I know, you know, I know we're pseudoscience, and this band's better, more extreme, and uh, we're not exactly in those conversations anymore. You know, I'm very aware of that. You know, hashtag Reddit. You know, it's just... <laughs> I'm very aware, but I was like, it's kind of one of those things that I experienced in my life when, when, when I was a kid. It's like when people talk about heavy music, right? You know, from the hardcore scene, it was like, I know they thought about Slipknot, but no one said it. Yeah, it's like until for, now, right? Until, until now, yeah. It's now like, people are finally saying that Slipknot were pretty much the OGs as far as like bringing ex- extreme music to the masses. I wonder, yeah, because uh, I mean, I. I mean, my 13-year-old dumbass kid self, like, I was like, at these shows with the corn shit on, I mean, watching, I don't know, Throwdown or something, if someone's sick, I'm like, yeah, like, obviously this is inspired by, you know, Slipknot or yeah. so, uh, so, uh, Sepultura, like, uh, and no one's talking about it. It's yeah. like that thought. So I kind of relate that. I always thought that was weird. But now we've got that to, to now, where now there's obviously bands better than us. I'm not saying we're amazing or anything, but like... um. When you say the term deathcore, I know we pop in their heads. But you're at least the first two or three bands. I but, would say first. But yeah. it's not cool to say it though. It's, mm. it's weird, huh? Yeah. It's like if you, it's cool to say these bands, you know. Mm. And that's I saw. I only bring it up because it really just popped in my stony brain now. Right. And uh, I remember that shit as as a kid. It's kind of like, it's so bizarre. Like, this is before. You know, the band, obviously, I was a kid. I mean, shit, like 25 years later. Mm-hmm. 
I, I kind of see like that, like similar. Yeah, you guys are in that way. Uh, I guess people's perception, right? Like similar to Slipknot. Hmm. I think in that way because yeah, I, I remember again as a kid, it wasn't cool to like Slipknot. Mm -mm. Like until really until like I would say like ten years ago. <coughs> it wasn't that long ago when yep. like Slipknot finally got recent. accepted as like a legitimate you know extreme metal band. Death by caffeine. Yeah. Oh, dude, totally. Yeah. It was like within five years, you know. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about that shit like last week, and it popped up on some like new, news thing, right? In regards, it says people were it's still getting new, numerals back, and which people backed it, right? It's true. Like so, it's so cool seeing like those bands earn that legendary spot. I bet as like I'm, a, you know, we're we're both new metal kids, but mm -hmm. I know you're a hardcore new metal kid. Yeah. I bet you're super stoked that it's finally getting like the respect it deserves as a genre. Yeah, now it's, yeah, it's like they're, obviously they're, they're big bands, but I mean, they never were like respected. Like that's, amongst that's like- That's the word, respect, right? And like, dude, they're, just to see them get that respect and watch it happen from like the outside, you know, being a fan, I'm like, damn, that's fucking cool to see like legends being born. You yeah. Know, legends like just, just becoming them, you know, like obviously Corn Slip Modern in that category. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, damn, that's fucking, it's so cool to see that. Yeah. I love that. And and that's what I never understood about people kind of hating on new Metal is mm -hmm. that, to me, it was almost always the most, like, progressive and experimental genre. So I don't, yeah. it always got categorized as kind of, like, basic or, or like, too simple. Yeah. And I always thought it was the opposite. I always thought new Metal was more, like, forward thinking and, like, taking risks, you know? Yeah, it's, it's so important, heavy music, too, to take a risk. You, you have know? to. I mean, it's heavy music. Yeah, you got to fucking take a take a leap of faith, man. Like, isn't heavy music itself a risk? Just it existing in its own right, you know? Yeah, I mean, oh, shit, if you want to fucking pursue it as a living, is it definitely like, am I going to make any money? <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah, and, and then if you look at like... Oh, my goodness. You know, like, if you consider Black Sabbath to be the creator of metal, right? Yeah. I mean, the fact that it was done on accident... You know, with the whole like finger thing, and they had the down tune. That's kind of like a a similarity and some parallels between any big band or any band that fucking breaks through anything. Yeah. Like there is a risk involved, and having like mm -hmm. not really knowing what what you're doing. Right. You know, like well, I'll try this. I don't, it doesn't really make any sense, but this when it hits, it's like oh my god, and the, and people yep. are kind of coming. Oh, it makes sense, but like well, when it was going on, it definitely felt like the wrong thing to do. You yeah, know? it's weird, right? You you sometimes you have to like you have to like make take a risk and it doesn't always work out the first time, but when it does work out, it's like the most satisfying, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, then uh sometimes it hits and like people think, Oh, that's fucking sick and then mm -hmm. you put our book and no one buys it, like, oh the guys are f the worst. Right. And never <laughs> but yeah. and sometimes it's just a timing thing, dude. It's weird. Timing, yeah. Timing and uh, some things work, some things don't. I mean it's just um it's funny because it's really obviously you all have hindsight, but mm -hmm. when you're in it in the moment, you know it's really hard to um, like when you get like those thoughts and feelings. It's really hard to like is this the right thing to do or is this because mm -hmm. it's really hard to yeah, it's tough to like nail it. You know, it's, it's yeah. so weird, especially if you know what's on the line. Like yeah, like you know, you know. Like, like our first record. Like uh, oh, are we gonna do it with a producer? A rock producer that's not metal, and then are we gonna do it live? I don't know. This is something like, yeah. Like, oh, it's gonna work. I don't know about it, but like then you do it. We did that same thing again on a self uh, self titled, mm -hmm. and then same thing. Oh, this is how we do this. So it's just like you don't really know. I mean, we don't really know anything in general, right? You know? Like, like <laughs> so it was the same method, yeah. but you got a different result. Yeah, I, I was guess. like, oh my goodness, dude, how that's do you? Weird. But you know, like maybe this is just my wishful thinking and my positive thinking, but I just think it's always better. As long as you think it's a good idea, you know, like take the risk, in my opinion, you know, over just kind of like just accepting the safe route. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the safe route is the right way, but I don't know. Sometimes, like if, yeah. if you feel, if you have a feeling that you have to like go out and like try something new, I think it, there's a reason why you have that gut feeling. Totally. Gut feelings tend to be right a lot. I agree. And not, I mean, pretty much all the time. Something about the uh, gut feeling that you get to follow. I try to go up with my gut feeling, especially like with my work, like my creative 
choices. I try to just kind of let it happen. You yeah, know what I mean, totally. Well, let's close this out with. Uh, have, have you heard it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I actually really liked it. Yeah, it's fucking badass. That 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 first song. Um, spoiler in three, two, one. Man, it's like is this Pink Floyd? <laughs> <laughs> it was like who, who, who yeah. am I? Who I feel like a lot to? of people listen j- to just that one song. And then, like, had an opinion about the album. Yeah. I was like, guys, if you listen to the rest of the, the album, it's sick. Yeah, it's hard to get people to listen to a whole record. It is, you know? And uh, yeah. I thought obviously the rest of the record was, uh, was, was great. That, that song, Yen, that's, that's my favorite. It's almost, like, grungy, right? It has, like, a dark kind of... Like a... Almost, you know, it almost might give me, like, a typo negative really? vibe. Like, goth, like a goth rock yeah. kind of thing. Goth metal thing. Yeah. Yeah, sick song, sick record. Congrats, guys! Fucking, it's awesome. Yeah, but you definitely don't don't judge it from the first song. <laughs> Again, yeah, and and that's why I was saying last time. Oh my goodness, it's. I'm sure people had the same reaction when Subliminal Verses came out. I think so. I Maybe, don't. Th- yeah. I don't think it was immediately like a huge success compared to like Iowa, right? I think it took a little while for people to get used to it. Maybe. I I could be wrong, but yeah. Yeah, Volume Three is that's a masterpiece. I mean, that's that's got to be my favorite, to be honest. Yeah, so, so great. like songwriting wise. Well, yeah, I mean, heard it. Go check it out. It's fucking sick. Got yeah. me horned up. Oh yeah, definitely horned up you, on that you can't, one. You can't go wrong. They're fucking sick, dude. It's just Slipknot. They give you a little bit of everything. Yeah, you know, it's true. Like, like uh, it's like almost like you're getting a full course meal. Like you leave satisfied. <laughs> very. You know? That is very very true, man. Yeah. What do you got planned today? Later. Um, probably just gonna edit this guy. Yeah. Work on this. Maybe watch. You know, we catch up on uh, Rings of Power. What's that? Uh, it's, that's the new uh, Lord of the Rings. Okay. Uh, series. So you like Lord Lord of the Rings? Um, yeah, I've been getting. Well, I was always a fan as a kid, but it's been getting really good. Like they're, you know, they're like restarting the whole story and stuff. Yeah. Wow. That'd be sick. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be going to a brewery with my my lady, lady date. Oh, nice. Where you, what spot are you hitting? Uh, I have a two spots in Corona. I always go to. I go to uh, uh, Stone Brewery. Oh, no, I do. I love Stone. Yeah, it's fucking sick. Oh, it's a Stone Church Brewery. Sorry. Um, oh, yeah, okay. And nice little like spot in Corona, kind of little hipster spot in Corona. Nice. Nice. Uh, really cool beers. They had a beer. They just added. Uh, my my favorite spots was that and Lamp Post Pizza. Those those are my spots. Oh, I love Lamp Post. And they uh they they collab with beers. Oh damn! So my two favorite beers, literally on on the planet, they literally had a collab. What what kind of beer is it? That that's like corn. It's still not fucking. <laughs> it's uh, but uh, which I, I would love <laughs> for that to happen. Yeah, I mean they're both like you know I like heavy beers like you know eight percent up. Mm. And uh, I don't. Yeah, it was a. Uh, what, what was the IPA? I think it was a, a, a IPA. Like a, probably like a double IPA or something? Yeah, some, something nuts. It was so amazing. I'm going to have those tonight. I love heavy beers that have like a really nice flavor to them. Yeah, it's so good. When they, they almost taste lighter than they really are. Mm-hmm. You know, those are always my favorite. That was, yeah, that was fucking scary. When it's like, <laughs> it tastes so good. It's like, you know, the percentage is high, but it's like, it's so smooth. Yeah, they're dangerous. So this is fucking scary. I am slightly nervous to go there in a jersey. Oh yeah, I, it's I, like a. I don't want people to talk to me. <laughs> you know. Hey, hey man, what do you? Th- <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not like a football guy. That this was like a gift. Yeah, so you don't want them to like think that you know a bunch of stuff yeah. about football. And so how about the, this? I'm like, dude, I don't fucking know, dude. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I, I'm a fucking poser, man. I, I just, it's, it's a gift, dude. Come on. No, I'm the same <laughs> way. I, I just like how jerseys look. I, when we, when we played in Jacksonville. And they and, and they gave us these jerseys. I immediately got why people wear jerseys in public. And I'm wearing it. Obviously, I'm wearing it now. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wear. It, I'm probably gonna wear it tonight. And it's so fucking comfortable. It's the material, right? It is so comfortable. It kind of feels like you're naked. <laughs> Cause it's a it's like a heavy cl- like uh, texture, but at the same time, it's like breathable, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Like a big fit and. And you f- you feel cool with, like when I'm on me, I'm wearing a jersey. It's got, I mean, they always have cool designs on them, so you yeah, like that that could be your whole fit right there. I immediately got it. Yeah, holy shit! Especially I love long sleeve jerseys. 
so badass. Yeah, like hockey jerseys especially. Yeah. Those those always look tight. And then I also realized why Michigan wore jerseys. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> this is why you did it back in the day. I mean, they, they always look sick on stage. I when know. Wore the, those. The, the hockey jerseys. Yeah. I might steal that move from you guys. It's like when they're having, <laughs> they're just the like draping kind of look. It looked dope. Yeah, it looks so cool. I, I wore this uh, in the Jackson Bull show, just a rep. And Dude, it, that's it, sick. It's so fucking comfortable. They, they put Garza in the back of that? Oh, yeah. Dude, that's sick. You got, you got to show the, show the camera. Right, can I do it somehow? Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Just kind of. Probably stand up for a sec. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Boom. Boom. Check Black it out. Teams on there, dude. Holy shit. Custom Garza jersey. That's sick. Custom. I thought they were just jerseys, and then when, when we were all like took, took it out of the bag, yeah, it was like these have our fucking names on them, dude. Holy shit. That's so cool of them to hook you guys up with that. Dude, little. Yeah, man. Big gifts or small gifts, man. They they stay with you. Yeah. You no matter what, uh, well, from friends or family or like something like this, we don't even know them. Mm -hmm. Um, like those little gifts, like stay with you. I'm like, damn, that was fucking cool. Thank you. Yeah, Holy I've always shit. heard that, uh, you know, that it's not, you know, it doesn't matter how much the gift is worth. It's like the, when you put personal thought into it, right? Yes. That's what makes it special. Uh, personal thought, yeah. I mean, that's that goes a long way, dude. A little thought into something, a little, a little gift. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking, man, priceless. Yeah, it's literally priceless. So badass. So yeah. maybe maybe we all have homework. Maybe we all should buy a little gift for someone that that we care about. Yeah, man. Honestly, you got me thinking. Yeah, I might wonder, wonder what, I, what I could buy Zach. <laughs> Maybe I could give him a big piece of a bag of bullshit or something. I don't know. <laughs> How's that? It's thoughtful, dude. Just give me, give me some, uh, some fancy IPA or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. What? What's your favorite beer? Um, I'm really into Belgian beers. Belgian. Oh yeah, yeah. Same yeah. as me. Yeah. I'm pretty like I don't think I even have a favorite. I, I kind of like them all. Same. But they're all sick. Yeah. So, all right, well, everyone, be thoughtful with your gifts. Go out there and find something special. There you go. And I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I should. You know what? I'm going to write it down. So I don't. <laughs> when yeah, you get man. older, you got to write shit down. Trust me. Because your memory is gone. Yep. Whenever you think you're going to remember it, you don't. Yep. We, we all know it. Mm -hmm. We all know that, but we still make that same fucking mistake. You know one trick you can do, though? I always try to repeat something in my head three times. That helps. Because it's kind of like writing it down. You Not quite as good, but it's it's halfway. Halfway? Yeah, I would say. Well, hell yeah, Zach. Uh, enjoy your night. Enjoy your week. Uh, we, hey, got a, man. we got a busy week this uh, coming up. We got some exciting episodes coming up. Yeah. Names we can't say yet, but uh, stay tuned. Uh, thank you for listening and watching again. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Phil. Later, Peace out, guys. guys.